In this section, I want to show you different attributes of a file. But before that, I want to do something. Let me create a file here and a folder. Right click here and go for new. And under that, click text document. And the name is going to be, for example, doc. Okay? And hit enter. Now we have a doc file under the docs folder. That's okay. Uh, you can change the name to whatever you want. But you cannot see the extension of this file. As you can see, the extension is hidden. I want to go to View tab, go to Options, and go to View tab here. And here, I want to show you that there is a hide extensions for known file types. Remove this check, click on Apply, and click on OK. Now you can see the extension of this file is .txt. If I go to another folder, for example, the Photos folder, you can see, no, not Photos folder, I can go to Folder 2, for example. You can see that I have a file with .exe extension, another file with .exe extension, some files with .jpg extension, and I can tell uh, what this file is based on the extension of the file. For example, the .jpg extension tells me that this is kind of a picture and this kind of picture is of type JPG we have different types of pictures for example we have uh, JPG we have PNG files we have bitmap files we have a lot, uh, a lot of other types of image files but here I'm just talking about you know the extension the extension tells me what program can open this file and what file this is. So let me back, go back to the docs folder. Under docs folder, I want to talk about the attributes of a file. So how can I change the attributes of a file? If I right click on this file and go for properties, by clicking on that, the properties window open. And here, down this list, we have an attributes part. You can see that we have two very common attributes here. One of them is read-only, one of them is hidden. If I cancel this out, if I try to open this file and try to type something, for example, sample text, and go for file save, you can see that the contents of file changes and this is going to be saved. And by closing this, everything is OK. Now, if I change this to read-only, by right-clicking on the file and go to Properties, and clicking on this read-only checkbox, and clicking on OK, now if I try to change the contents of this file, for example, I want to add another line, second line, for example, and try to save the file, make, uh, you know, notice that I am clicking on Save, not Save As. But if I click on Save, Again, the Save As document open. Why? This is because this file is read-only. You cannot make any changes to this file. So, if you want to make any changes to this file, you have to, uh, you, you have to, you know, save it as a new file. You have to save it as another file. Now, I don't want to do this. I just click on this and click on Don't Save. And again, Right click on this file and go for properties and remove the read only check. The second attribute that is so you know commonly used is hidden. If I click on that and click on apply, now you can see that the icon of this file has changed a little pale and then it disappears. If I click on OK and try to find the file, it is not there. Where can I find this file? If I want to see this file, I need to go to View tab and go to Options. By going to Options and going to View tab again, here we have a radio button. The first one tells me that don't show hidden files. The second one tells me show hidden files. Click on the second one, click on OK. Now your file is there. But you can see that the icon is a little pale. This means this is a hidden file. Now you can do the same thing for a folder. If I right click on this folder and go to properties, I have read only and you can see a square instead of a check or you know instead of a blank area. 
This means that some items in this folder have read-only attribute, some items do not. I don't want to change this, I just want to show you the hidden attribute. Click on hidden and click on apply. Now you can see the folder is a little pale again. Now I want to remove this and click on apply and it is again, you know, quiet, uh, colorful. Now we have some other attributes that we can change as well. For example, we can change this file to a system file. If I go to drive C for example, you can see that I do not, let me maximize this because I need the, the more space to show you this. You can see that some files or folders are a little pale, but some files you expect to see them here, they are not. If you want to see them, you need to go to options and go to view tab again. And here you have an item that tells me hide protected operating system files. This means they have system attributes. If I remove this, there will be an error. It, it, it warns me that if you, you know, click on yes, the very, very sensitive files are visible and you may damage this file during your operations. I'm not going to damage them, just want to show you. Uh, so I click on yes and click on OK. Now you can see a little, you know, a number of files and folders such as recycle bin. You know that recycle bin exists in every partition and you know a combination of all of them you know represent here the recycle bin on the desktop. Let me go back to this uh, you know folder. As you can see we have some files such as swap file, page file and some other files that uh, you know help Windows to boot such as boot manager file. They are all system files. You are not expected to touch them. So they are going to be hidden. Let me go back to options and put a check beside this again. I don't want to, you know, inadvertently oh, you know, hurt them. Okay, now I want to show you something. Right click on this Windows button, go for run and type CMD here. By typing CMD actually you are opening a command prompt or cancel this out click on this Windows button, type CMD. Here you can see command prompt again, but the difference is if you want to open it as, a, as an administrator, you can right click on that and click on run as administrator. This is exactly what I'm going to do. So I click on run as administrator. This is the user account control dialog box. I click on yes, and now a command prompt opens. Now I want to go to drive C, folder docs. So I type cd backslash. This takes me to drive C to the root of this drive as you can see. And I want to type cd docs and hit enter. Now I want to change the attributes of a file. What file? Let me open this. The file name is doc.txt. So I want to change its attributes to be a system file. For this, I need to type this attrib, this is the command that I'm going to use. And which file I'm going to, you know, change, that is the doc.txt. But before typing the file name, I need to type the attributes. I want to add, and for addition, I'm going to uh, type a plus. I want to add system, and I want to add hidden, so, and I want to add, for example, read-only. As you can see, for each of these, I need to type a special letter. For system attribute, I need to type S. For hidden attribute, I need to type H. And for read-only attribute, I need to type R. And this plus, this tells me that I am adding this attributes to this file. So I'm adding multiple attributes at this, uh, you know, at once. So the file name is doc.txt, and I hit enter. By hitting enter, the attribute of this file is going to change to system, hidden, and read only. So if I go to this folder and press F5, you can see the file is going to disappear. Although we are showing the, the, uh, the, the hidden file, but this is a system file. So if you want to see this file again, you need to go to options, go to view, and 
add a check, uh, you know, remove the check from hide protected operating system files or remove the system attributes from this file. I want to remove the attribute for this. I'm going to execute the same command and instead of plus s, I want to type minus s and hit enter. Now, if I go to this folder, you can see the doc appears again. Now, if I want to remove the hidden attribute, I can do the same. If I want to remove the read-only attribute, I can do the same. But I want to show you that by right-clicking on this file, I'm going to property, both of them have a check. That's because I have changed those attributes using uh, this plus icon, uh, this plus, you know, uh, arguments. And of course, I have some other types of attributes such as archive or, you know, other attributes such as, you know, encrypted or compressed. I want to show you all of them here. So let me close this. I want to remove hidden and I want to remove read only. Click on apply. Now let's go to advanced part of this attributes. Now you can see these are advanced attributes. File is ready for archiving. This means that uh, plus A is selected in attrib command. If you are going to, you know, uh, activate this file for archiving, you need to add a plus A. Uh, this second attribute, actually I don't know the abbreviation of this attribute, but I don't care about that. This tells me that if I want to uh, catalog the contents of this file, I need to have checked this. So this has a, a, a background, you know, I guess a service that is working and you know any document that you add to your computer if it has indexing enabled it is going to be indexed and whenever you are going to search for contents of a file you need to know that this has been enabled previously. Okay, we have two attributes that are mutually exclusive. I mean if you select compress you cannot encrypt and if you encrypt cannot compress. So by compressing this file you are telling Windows that I am not using this file too often. Okay? So you can compress it to save the space on this storage, I mean the hard disk, and by you know by saving the storage I make sure that I have enough space for other applications or other files. So if I select this and click on OK you can see that by clicking OK here, the name of this file changes to blue. This means that this file is compressed. So what happens when I open a compressed file? You can see that by opening a compressed file, nothing happens. It opens for you transparently. You are not going to uncompress this first and open it. Actually, it is a transparent operation on this file. So as you know, this file is open. You know, uh, has been opened several times. So it is going to be, uh, you know, it is not going to be, you know, compressed too much. But if I do not open it for some time, it is going to be compressed and save the hard disk. Now, why should I go for this type of compression? Why wouldn't I compress this using a zip algorithm or RAR algorithms or algorithms like this? This is because by, you know, compressing this file like this, you are not going to, you know, have an application installed prior to opening this. And Windows is managing this for you. Actually, you are not going to touch this. But what happens if I, you know, want to change the attribute to encrypting? In next section, I want to show you what encrypting means and how we can encrypt a file and, you know, uh, back up the encryption key and things like this.